Hello everyone and welcome back to some current events. Uh, we're going to be checking out on what's been happening in the chess world while we were busy covering the, the Morphe Saga. Uh, this is a game from the Singfeld Cup and uh, well, already five rounds was, were played but this is a game from round four. It features Jeffrey Xiong and Fabiano Caruana and Fabi is kind of a legend when it comes to the Singfeld Cup as he won the 2014 Singfeld Cup with, uh, with just an unrivaled performance. He uh, crushed the tournament uh, which uh, had an average ELO rating of over 20. 2800 and he had a uh, rating performance of uh, over 3100 so that's extremely impressive and the tournament featured uh, extremely strong players uh, Magnus played uh, Levon played Hikaru played Topal played uh, and uh, MVL and uh, the, 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 to this day I think that's uh, unrivaled considering the Singfield Cup and uh, I, I think it's even you know okay if we maybe if we uh, disregard uh, maybe Fisher's rating performance uh, when we take into account uh, everything that he achieved from you know starting the the Palma de Mallorca interzonal to the candidate uh, matches to his uh, match with Spassky. Uh, I think this would be uh, the maybe the the best rating performance. But all in all, uh, you know Fabi a uh, pretty pretty uh, big legend uh, in, in uh, the Singfield Cup. Uh, here he faces Jeffrey Shiong and it's quite an interesting game so let's check it out. As this is the first game we're showing from the tournament, it's a classical tournament uh, and of course I forgot to uh, replace the little E so just give me a second there. There we go, nicely done. Alright, a few more seconds. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a classical tournament, 19 minute, 90 minutes per player uh, for the first 40 moves and then for the rest of the game you get you get an additional 30 moves. Uh, it's a 10 player classical uh, round robin event, of course taking place in St. Louis uh, and the prize fund is $1.275 million, so that's that's a lot of money. Now getting to the game, uh, let's check it out. Cheung with the white pieces opens with knight to f3, so he goes for the Areti opening, uh, we have d5 by Fabi, g3 and now c5. You're a opponent is, uh, you know, developing on the flank, of course, you will grab the center. Uh, we have bishop to g2 and now e6. And now, uh, Xiong just castles, Fabi goes knight to f6 and now striking in the center with the d4. And here, uh, usually you go knight to c6 or capture on d4. Fabi played uh, pawn capture on d4, uh, knight capture on d4 and now e5 grabbing the center. Uh, even more as now uh, these pawns are really really strong knight to b3 and now uh, Fabi goes for a5 now uh, you, you could also play bishop to e6 here it is the, the the mostly played move here but Fabi plays a5 and it's been played only once um uh, up until this point and uh, in the game that we're talking about uh, it was uh, countered by a4 it was the game uh, Oleg Romanincin versus Bruno Belotti uh, where Romanincin won that game very nicely uh, but Xiong doesn't care about the a4 uh, the a pawn instead of a4 he just um, uh, well continues uh, with uh, uh, bishop to g5 so he just continues development and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game uh, Fabi now takes this opportunity to kick away the knight from this square we have knight back to c1 and now we reach the position from the thumbnail you can see that um, it's not very often you will see the knights on b1 and c1 so I thought it was a funny position white having knights on b1 and c1 and black having this massive center here uh, but okay uh, Fabi continues development we have bishop to e6 and now uh, you could continue for example knight c3 to add more pressure to the pawn you could play c4 attack the center with a with a c pawn uh, but but Xiong goes for e4. This basically calls for a d4 advancement by Fabi, which he does, uh, and now comes f4. We've uh, made him or maybe overcommit a little bit in the center, and now we're going to undermine his pawn center. And uh, Fabi has to figure out how to deal with this. If you if you allow f captures on e5 while your knight is pinned, that's uh, going to end really badly. So you could go for knight to c6, for example, uh, but Fabi just plays bishop to e7. And uh, the idea is that uh, if Xiong uh, wants to grab some pawns, uh, uh, he's more than welcome to do this, but Fabi's is going to play knight to g4, and after, let's say, a trade here, captures, captures, he can grab yet another pawn, uh, but now uh, black simply has so much for, for the price of these two pawns, let's say knight to c6, the queen can move, and even if queen to d6 trying to trade queens, queen to g5, for example, and now black will be down two pawns, but he uh, he's uh, up by a lot uh, in development, white has a doubled pawn here, he's hemming in his own light square bishop, so black is to be preferred here. Uh, so instead, after this bishop to e7 idea by Fabi, Xiong just continues development. He plays knight to d3. 
And okay, Fabio also continues development, knight to c6, and now, uh, again, uh, capturing here just knight g4, and the white uh, is not really having a good time having these doubled pawns here. So instead, we have bishop to f3, later on the bishop can come to h5, which will be very useful. Uh, knight to d7 by Fabio offering a trade of dark square bishops, and Xiong captures. We have captures, captures, and now knight to d2. And the knight to d2 is a very tricky move because it takes away the c4 square from Fabi's bishop. So if Fabi, if Fabi is reckless here, for example, he castles f5 and we trap his bishop. So we can't really allow that. So after knight to d2, we have b5. Now Fabi is uh, freeing up the c4 square for his bishop. The pawn is now nicely defending this. Uh, and now comes b3. Again, guarding the c4 square. Uh, and Fabi has to do something about this. He plays f6. He frees up the f7 square for his bishop. Uh, bishop to h5 with check and now Fabi blocks it we have g6 uh, but now the bishop doesn't go back but rather we have f5 by Xiong uh, we have bishop to f7 getting the bishop out of harm's way and now captures captures and the bishop goes back bishop to g4 so uh, who uh, profited for this uh, from this was it white or, or maybe Fabi he now has the open h file for his rook uh, and he it, it does seem that his bishop has uh, a lot more squares to use now so or maybe maybe black uh, really didn't mind this idea from white. And Fabi says, all right, your bishop is a lot more active. Mine isn't doing all that much. Let's just trade it. So bishop captures on e6. We have queen captures on e6. And now knight to f3. Uh, pretty much stopping any idea black might have had uh, of playing f5. Because, uh, well, you just weaken the e5 pawn too much. Then both of the knights will be attacking e5. Queen is coming to e2. will attack e5. The rook can come from a1 to e1. We'll also join the attack uh, to, to the e5 pawn so this pawn on f6 uh, is doing a fine job so here Fabi played g5 and now comes queen to e2 white connects the rooks here and now Fabi has to decide how to uh, treat this position and it's not uh, an easy decision because it's it's a pretty wild one and you could do a lot of things uh, uh, for example king to f7 connects the rooks uh, gets the king to, to the king side you might also consider king to d8 to c7 you connect the rooks this way uh, but then bring the king over to the queen side but Fabi tried knight to d8 he wants to bring the knight over to f7 uh, but uh, this allows a white uh, something that uh, well uh, whenever I see this uh, I remember uh, Josh Waitzkin's uh, advice from the chess master uh, 9000 I believe uh, it was series uh, he said always look for the square left behind and here, by playing knight to d8, Fabi left the b4 square. Uh, this is the square left behind, and Xiong immediately jumps, uh, uh, well, jumps to this square. We have knight to b4, and now the knight will be able to jump to d5. So that's... Um... Uh, really a, a great square for this knight and it will not be easy to get rid of it uh, as you'll see in the game so the pawn is also being attacked here by the queen we have rook to b8 defending the pawn and now knight to d5 so this is now a beautifully placed knight and maybe it could have been averted but uh, i don't think fabi uh, found any any active plans the, the 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 ones that we mentioned king to f7 or maybe just bringing the king to c7 uh do do feel like uh, maybe um a bit of a too passive of a plan. Uh, give, just give me a second. I think maybe Medo is, is joining us. Yes, it was Medo. Uh, sometimes he just, you know, pops up. Uh, so after knight to d5, uh, black has to decide what to play here, and Fabi just castled here. So we have castles, and now uh, what does Xiong play? Well, he has a beautifully placed knight. His rooks are connected, the knight is nicely placed on f3, so now it's time to bust open the position, and he starts with h4. Now, there's a question, uh, maybe uh, h4 is a bit premature, uh, because you want to play rook f2 and rook a to f1 at some point, so maybe, maybe you could do it now, or maybe you want to bust open with h4 first, uh, I guess. It's a, it's a matter of preference. So here we have h4. Uh, and now you don't want to capture this. If you capture this, allow knight captures, then you gain full control of the f5 square. Then you allow queen to g4 and black is just getting destroyed here. So instead, after h4, we have knight to f7 by Fabi. Uh, this is the idea behind knight to d8. Uh, and now h captures on g5. Again, rook f2, rook a to f1 uh, is always possible, but Xiong decides to capture first. We have f captures on g5, and only now rook to f2 is the doubling on the f file happening. Uh, we have knight to b6 here. 
Uh, again, a very, very tricky position. You could dislodge this knight with g4, but then you allow knight to h4 to f5. On the other hand, there uh, really isn't an active move here for, for, for Fabi to play because it's such a, such an ugly position to have. So Fabi tries knight to b6, uh, but this also means that, yes, while well, he's getting rid of this monster knight on d5, he's allowing queen captures on b5. And Xiongu goes for it. We have queen captures on b5, knight captures on d5, and now as the rook is attacking the queen, you have to recapture this. Oh, you could capture with the pawn, okay, and then maybe capture here, uh, which um, uh, d d doesn't seem like a bad idea. For example, pawn captures, rook captures here, d captures on e6, uh, also seems very much uh, very much playable. But for some reason, Xiong uh, disagrees with it. He plays queen captures on d5, Fabi uh, captures, and now e captures on d5. And now he wants to get rid of this one pawn on the queen side. A captures on b3, A captures, and now Fabi plays uh, d3. And d3 is already uh, a very tricky move, but uh, there was a maybe a simpler way of, uh, you know, just calming things down. For example, rook to b5, you go after this pawn, and the question is, uh, can you defend against rook to a6 and the rook coming to g6 and all the threats that follow? The question is, yes, most likely. Uh, for example, rook captures on d5, and now after rook to g6, check king to h7, now we're going to play rook to f6, and it seems like we're threatening a lot of very nasty stuff, uh, but king g7 here, and and it, it seems that uh, you're controlling everything very nicely and uh, not uh, a lot to, to look forward to. Uh, the problem is if you go knight captures on g5 here, uh, it's not a problem because we can capture here and after rook captures on f8, now we have this knight to h3 check and we're gonna win back our uh, our material. King g2, knight captures on f2 and now the rook of course captures back. And yes, you're down a pawn but you will be able to draw this. So what you would probably have to do after king g7 is not go for knight captures on g5, probably knight to d2. Uh, but still, it should uh, should not be a problem. Uh, Black has uh, everything under control here. Black can simply play d3 now, the move that he played earlier, and if c3, for example, rook here. And now you have this position where white has a passed b and c pawn, Black has a passed d and e pawn, and it's a complete mess of a position, but, uh, you know, Probably black black will hold, but white has uh, an easier time playing this position. Uh, but Fabi instead tried d3, and now, okay, we have c captures on b3, rook captures on b3, and now rook to a6. So a very similar position, but uh, also a different one. Uh, and here, uh, Fabi, sh Fabi should just continue grabbing with uh, rook captures on d3. And now the, the, the idea is pretty much the same. If rook g6, king h7, rook to f6... Uh, it seems like white is uh, making progress, but we have this e4 move, but this is the one that was really, really hard to spot. Now the thing is, uh, after knight captures on g5 and knight captures, rook captures on f8, uh, of course, again, knight to h3 saves the day. King f1, knight captures, we're going to play king captures because our rook is no longer attacked, but now rook captures on d5, and it's a dead draw. Uh, but instead, after rook to a6, Fabi did not go for rook captures on d3. Fabi tried rook to d8, now going after the d5 pawn as well. Uh, but the position is now uh, actually lost for black. So feel free to pause the video here and to win the game for Xiong while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing it's the exact idea we've already shown twice, only the difference is this time it works. So congratulations to everyone who found it. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to g6 with check. And now, of course, you can't go to the f file because our rook uh, is there just moving the knight anywhere, just wins the game for us. So we have to play king to h7 and now rook to f6. And here there is no move that Fabi can play uh, because your knight is attacked and you can't move it and you can defend it so we're going to show three uh, really fun lines that uh well it just I nicely illustrate why this is so so if you move the knight knight to d6 the problem is knight captures on g5 the black knight no longer guards the uh, g5 square so knight captures on g5 you have to move the king king g7 now knight e6 check king h7 and you are getting checkmated rook h2 check king to g8 we're gonna play rook g6 check king f7 rook to g7 check we're gonna play king f6 rook to h6 check king f5 and now the beautiful uh, g4 to end the game the rook g5 is also winning but g4 it, it, i i always think it's much nicer to you know uh mate the opponent with a pawn uh, or at least with a piece with uh, of the of the least um, cost so here after rook 
to f6, you can't really move the knight. If you try defending the knight, it's not really much better. We're just going to capture the knight here. And after rook captures, now knight captures on g5. And now we attack both the rook and the king. And also our rook is uh, already attacking the rook. King g7, we're going to capture the rook. And we're up a full piece, of course, completely winning. And another thing after rook to f6, since we can't move the knight, we can't defend it with the rook. Maybe we can defend it with the king. Now there's no check here. Uh, but the problem is there is a check. Rook captures on f7, uh, king captures, and now we are under the mask of the rook, knight to d4 check. Or d2, we could choose d d4 or d2. I prefer d4 since it's, you know, looks cooler as the pawn is kind of attacking the knight but then after the king moves we're going to capture the rook and we're uh, again up a full piece so uh, it didn't work the first two times but this time rook g6 uh, rook g6 to f6 works and uh, there's really no move fabi can make here so so fabi simply captured the pawn here on d3 and he was in this position on move 36 that fabiano caruana resigned the game and a very nice victory by jeffrey Xiong against the legend of the singfield cup of fabiano caruana uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I haven't really been uh, following what's been happening in the chess world while we were covering the Morphe saga. So if you have any of your favorites, any of your uh, games that you would like me to show, use hashtag suggestion or send me an email or something. I will review the game. Uh, and, you know, if it's a fun one, we're definitely going to show it. But for now, I'm uh, probably going to be uh, covering the you know, some of the uh, interesting games fr from the Singfield Cup. Uh, so, yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Harry Barton, Tom Derolo, uh, Balashtanka, David Kimura, and Jay Langdon Consulting for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Singfield Cup and whatever else uh, is happening in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.